your registration number for persons who are registered business organizations, um, telephone number, and email, all just necessary information that we need for the profile of the applicant. Membership, how many members are in the, in the organization? Does the organization have full time or part time employees? Does the organization have volunteers? Projects or programs completed in the last two years? Does the organization have a bank account? And everybody should. What is the average annual budget for the organization? And these are areas that please you must fill out. And the numbers here identified are the linkages to the um, guidelines that will help you better understand how to fill out. This particular page. All right, next is the project action. This is where you will explain in detail um, what your project is all about, um, you know, the duration of it, um, the statement, who are your beneficiaries, etc. I think that's everybody would understand what that. What problems are you solving? Correct. Um, we have to make sure that the objectives are measurable. As I was taught in school, they should be smart, specific, um, it's measurable, attainable, realistic, timely, and yeah, smart. <laughs> um, each, you know, each section, you put down the activities that you're gonna do in the project, um, the means of verification, um, the methodology, how you're going to go about doing the project. Um, indicators are very important with respect to this aspect. Indicator would be, for example, if you train somebody, you should have a report at the end of the training session. And ideally, I would like if there are any training sessions that an instrument is administered to the person being trained so that they can indicate if they benefited from the training, how they found the trainer, and so forth. And that can be attached to your report. impact would be, of course, that the end result to make sure that whatever we do in our project, our actions, it helps towards the development and the strengthening of the Human Resource Development Program, which as Mr. Kuhn would have mentioned before, the five pillars. Human rights. Human rights, environment. Human rights is a broad area. This can cover many things. Um, your project can be geared, for example, to a training, um, maybe at-risk youth, um, things that impact on basic human rights. And ideally, we'd like to describe this in detail. Again, this is the form you pull out to put in your budget and all the breakdown to add up to the 25,000 or whatever amount you will be applying for. Of course, we have documents that must be presented with the application, which is proof of your registration or incorporation in your certificate, um, as well as the legal entity form to be fully completed and signed as well. And the operative word here is must be completed or must be submitted and must be signed. We're you have to sign the application for months. Um, we also have the European Union, yes, as an observer, and then the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. So then you will have all these persons evaluating all the proposals submitted to come to a final selection um, by at least um, December 1st, 2012. So you should at least hear of the success, you know, if you have been successful in getting the grant. Um, the grant, you'll be getting, um, once successful, you'll be getting 80% of the, whatever your cost of the, the, the proposal is, and the other 20% will come um, probably a month before the pro your project is finished. Um, and because, of course, it's for six months, then everybody should be finished, have received all funds by June next year. Yes, thank you.
Thank you very much. Do you take any questions or comments? <laughs> Type of action or in an eligible term. Yeah. What, what do you mean by subcontracting? Um, subcontracting. You take the funds and you subcontract somebody else to do your company work. activity, your work for you. So you're not to pay. No, it is for you or your organization. <coughs> you're not. You're not hearing hear me. Um, subcontracting. You cannot use the action, the money to subcontract somebody else to do the action for you. The organization has to compete, unless of course it's training. Of course, you can subcontract somebody to do that for you, but you cannot, for example, you know what else? Yeah, we also have to give our work to see who else is from. Sorry, the subcontract is that we're, the project is supposed to be that we are paying the particular NSA agent to do the activity. You can still have your training if you necessarily need somebody to build the building. People who have finite portions to do within your within your project. But the actual managing of the project has to be done by the NSA. You can't subcontract the management of the project to somebody else. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, ma'am? Yeah. Can you just go over the eligibility? Um, the guidelines <coughs> state uh, non-profit organizations or NSAs, but most of the presentation has been specific towards NSAs. Page. From time to time, I will ask that you could jump yes. in here because these are their definitions. So you you see that the maybe you want to go to the application form where. They ask for registration, and they're actually in your registration, showing your registration. We will know if you are not for profits or you are for profits, uh, and if you are from civil society nature, if you NSA. So, the difference between NSA and not for profits actually is not very big, but the difference between NSA and NGO would be, for example, a trade union would be an NSA. Uh, small business association would be an NSA, but not necessarily a classical NGO because they would be employers organizations, for example, or employees organizations. So I think it's a small, small difference. But I think the non for profits may be actually the main, the main criteria. Well, if you do make a profit, you're not an Yes. 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 Yes.